Hello, and welcome to a Battletech Memphis Battle Report. Today, the clans meet metal matching missiles, muscles, and might to keep the M&Ms from falling to the enemy. Check it out. Today's 30,000 BV2 per side mission was a pretty straightforward impromptu deviation from a standard encounter. Seize the Lost Egg Candy Factory for the good of children everywhere, or face the shame of defeat. On the clan side, we have the indomitable duo of Double Nightwolves, and an assortment of other heavy anti-mech biased assaults. The Nova, Cat, and Nightwolf complement each other fairly well, while the Grizzly and Rifleman 2C make for a great fire support platform. Rounding out the unit is a group of Shadowhawk 2Cs and some fast cavalry units by the way of a Vulture C and a Puma. Adding to the firepower is a solitary Wu Sun loaded to the gills with HEs. On the Surret side of the conflict is a mix of three units principally. A periphery guard unit, compromising of a massive amount of close combat mechs by way of an Axeman, two Hatchetmen, a Hyena, and a Charger. Included in their formation is enough infantry with transports numbering just short of a battalion. Finishing out the mech company is an excellent mix of traditional Draconis units. Notice the dragon in the back, dressed for the occasion. And the mercenary unit that is accompanying them today, the Christians Crushers. They have served with distinction and are primed to do so again with an excellent fire support composition. The clan strategy was pretty straightforward. I happen to like simple plans, much less to go wrong. The assaults were going to line up the center and take the candy factory while the fire support plays the middle ground. The Shadowhawks were to be annoying as possible on the right flank, tying up as much resources as possible while the Puma and Vulture C did as much as they can on the left, utilizing their respective speeds to keep them safe. Early moves were pretty quick. The Karnovs made the mistake of not dismounting immediately. It seemed a critical error at first and quite an oversight by my brother who had moved them as far forward as possible without the movement points to land or disembark. He had forgotten that infantry carriers can only mount or dismount at the end of the carrier's movement. He had figured they could drop off at the beginning of their turn and spend the rest of the turn bugging out, but that's not the case. The assaults continue their march up the center while the Karnov crews assure that all the tray tables and seats are in their fully upright and locked positions as the infantry get out into the parking lot. He wasn't too pleased about that initially. I moved the Puma and Vulture pretty early in my initiative steps. Most of their threat comes from how my opponent responds as opposed to what they can do by themselves. So I want to make them to look as threatening as possible and let him respond to that. He doesn't quite buy it though. Already, knowing what is really at stake and how the game is being scored, he dispatches an appropriately token resistance of light mags. And he's right to do it. He sends his own annoying cavalry that the Vulture C and Puma have a really hard time dealing with on their own. But that token resistance really doesn't last long. That puff of black smoke up at the top left is the first kill by the Vulture himself, landing a fairly unlikely shot right through the center torso of one of the locusts and coring it right outright. The Karnovs even luck out by being just out of line of sight of everything with an impressive weapons platform. This is fortuitous since parking earlier like he might have wanted would have left the infantry huffing it out in the open. Now they literally just cross the parking lot down to the objective. And this, this will be a textbook reason why the Hellstar, a great mech, is absolutely horrible at some things, as the Night Wolves, Warhawk C, and Novacat are poorly equipped to handle them. I joke about the Night Wolf being equipped with everything in the kitchen sink, but sadly it doesn't have a machine gun. The irony of having a unit equipped with everything suddenly rendered ineffective because it doesn't have the one thing it actually needs is crippling. As we can see here, the Wu Sun is yet to swoop in on the target, instead loitering for a more opportune time to come in when opportunity fire doesn't present itself as such a liability.
I try to press my advantage with the puma and vulture along the side as the Karnovs begin to bug out, instead of taking on the lights that are intercepting them. Every turn they distract, along with the Shadowhawks on the right side of the camera, which is slightly unseen, is another turn that the assaults have to clear out the complex. Besides, the outfit of Gosses and ERPPCs, though spectacular when they do connect, is just a poor match against something with such a high to hit number. They're far better off hunting the heavies. Given a turn or two, I could always send the Warhawk C back after them. But in retrospect, I wonder what the wisdom was of moving them so early on so that the lights could get such easy back shots. But as things are getting into a furball around the complex, it's time to bring in that air support. So long as everyone has someone else to shoot at, much like the fleeing Karnovs, it will be a low priority target. The bombs are released from the Wusun, but as you can see by the splash, it's largely ineffective despite delivering 40 points to the charger. Slightly off screen on the right, uh, Madcap Mark III is actually displacing to our left flank. We had already established that things weren't working out quite so well over here on the left flank, and the Shadowhawk TCs were actually holding down almost a company's worth of mechs. It's a pretty good trade but he got shut down as he was trying to cross the field through crossfire from the supporting lances. And the Puma gets a kill by delivering a 15 point ERPPC shot to the back of the head on that Hatchiman. Gotta love that. And out of the carnage, and from behind the comm tower, the hyena made a beeline for the clan assault mix. Ended up being something of a 31st century Chuck Norris. Though it received a whole lot of fire on its approach, we couldn't quite put it down before it was able to do some damage. Just the same, we weren't able to do much damage to the infantry in the building, as they just kind of huddled up. The situation was already starting to be painted pretty well for the clan if something wasn't done. At this point, the battle line for the Jade Falcon was starting to falter. We can't quite repel the Surrats, and even the fire support elements are starting to choose between taking shots or facing a PSR and return fire. We let them take the hill, and now it's become a firing platform that even the clan weaponry is struggling to match. We opt to hide. Any turn that they can deny a target is a turn they buy for the assaults. It was a pretty good move, considering that they had spent most of their early initiative movements standing still. All we had to do was back up. The Vulture's engines goes down to combined fire from over a lance worth of weapons that I have thus far been mostly ignoring, but statistics catch up with you. The Puma begins to throttle the reactor up to make up for that lost time as the Wu sign comes in low and weapons hot. He opens up on the Drac catapult that was in front of him, and everything but an SRM volley hits, scoring no less than seven confirmed crits on the rear, one of which was an untouched ammo bin. The periphery guard starts pressing in their numbers, closing in on all angles into the complex. They even start jumping in to get closer shots and to deny movement avenues. The Axeman even makes a death from above attack against the Warhawk. Now, I don't recommend this. It's usually just an exercise in wacky sound effects. Nonetheless, the clan assaults are now going muzzle to muzzle in the factory complex with no room to spare. The assaults are pegging the heat scales as they PSR mech after mech, desperately pushing back the inner sphere tide while dumping munitions into the infantry columns, who stay steadfast despite it and return PSRs in kind.
and then a straw too many was added. The Axeman actually connects with its death from above. I begin to eat my own words as we start compensating for the situation as the Warhawk crumbles under 20 points of cockpit damage. They're going to need a whole lot of buckets to get that guy out of there. The factory complex is looking grim. Even though the assaults are causing horrific damage to the incoming Intersphere lances, the armor is failing, the mechs are falling, and the Night Wolf tasked with securing the facility is two points away from losing its pilot from successful head hits and ammo explosions. Even the delaying element, now only a solitary puma, had an unfortunate reactor shut down right in front of a lance of mechs. Even the Drax faced demoralizing failure as the Wolverine dispatched to chase the displacing Madcat fell along with the Totem Dragon, meeting an early demise. The Intersphere seizes the initiative, realizing that their weight of arms would now completely break our ability to respond to them. They begin crushing in on the complex from all directions. Steadfast and resolute, despite the writing being on the wall regarding the tactical situation, we rode out to meet them, to crush the Intersphere in one last glorious battle before the end. Along the complex, the Inner Sphere lost another Hatchetman and the Hyena, but it was clear we were at our breaking point with an untouched Warhammer rounding the corner and another company of infantry crossing the parking lot, not to mention a barely touched support elements that the Shadowhawks had tied up. We played out the result of the Novacat against the Axeman, and it thoroughly eviscerated it before walking off the field. The damaged Nightwolf, however, fell again to the infantry's constant assault this time falling unconscious on the factory deck. In the following turns, the poor bloody infantry made darn sure the pilot wouldn't wake up again. This has been an ouchies bat rep, and thanks for watching.